Mr. Castro currently faces hundreds of years in prison with the current charges, and it is our hope that we can continue to work toward a resolution to avoid having an unnecessary trial about aggravated murder and the death penalty. Does Ariel Castro deserve death? That's our bold question. A verdict coming up from our in-studio jury. But first, let's take a look at some of the evidence here in the HLNTV.com evidence room. And you talk about the charges against Ariel uh, Castro. 977 charges contained in the most recent indictment uh, from this month. But of those charges, ladies and gentlemen, only two of them involve aggravated murder that get us to a potential death penalty. Let's take a listen to the prosecutor. Based on the facts, I fully intend to seek charges for each and every act of sexual violence, rape, each day of kidnapping, every felonious assault, all his attempted murders, and each act of aggravated murder he committed by terminating pregnancies that the offender per perpetuated against the hostages during this decade-long ordeal. The law of Ohio calls for the death penalty for those most depraved criminals who commit aggravated murder during the course of a kidnapping. And it's that combination, aggravated murder plus a kidnapping, that makes Ariel Castro um, eligible for the death penalty. Those aggravated murders are related directly to the unlawful termination of the pregnancies of one of the women that he was holding captive. Speaking of those young women, let's take a listen to them. I'm getting stronger each day, and I'm having my privacy has helped immensely. I ask that everyone continues to respect our privacy and give us time to have a normal life. Be positive. Learn that it's important to give than to receive. Thank you for all your prayers. I would say thank you for the support. So to get to the death penalty, you're going to have to take this case to trial. That means those young women will have to testify on the stand, be cross-examined. Darren? So amazing, Vinny. Watching those interviews, you can't help but be struck by how powerful those women were. I mean, just amazing. So we've got a bunch of questions over here, some for our experts. Heather, you had a question about how prosecutors go about doing their business. Well, we know that this trial is coming up um, relatively soon and um, that Ariel is um, um, eligible for the death penalty. So my question is, um, with the trial coming up so soon, why haven't prosecutors already implemented that and what criteria are they mulling over to try to decide? Right. So what are the factors that the prosecutors might consider when they're deciding whether or not to yeah. seek the death penalty? It's one well, thing to be eligible. It's another thing to go for it. Yeah, I think part of it is the victims in this case, don't you think? Absolutely. Sure. I mean, first you got to see what the victims want. If the victims have, if the victims want mercy, I mean, they're the first people we should care about. What do the victims want, and do they want to go through a trial? I mean, the next step is, can we win this? Can we get a death verdict? Do we want to spend all the taxpayers' money to get a death penalty case and but not win it? Money have anything to do with justice? If you can't win it, you don't want to spend three million dollars of the taxpayers' money and still end up with life in prison. If you can get life in prison voluntarily, sometimes that's the best use of taxpayer money and. Sometimes being in jail for the rest of your life is worse than the death penalty. No, I would go for the death penalty. I'm never going to buy that argument. Well, we heard that earlier, though. People believe that. They, juror number two raised that issue. So don't go picking on my jurors over here. And you were doing that with me. I, <laughs> I, I think the prosecution is very concerned about the women as well. And the fact that they have been able for all this time to keep them very private and to respect their healing. And this will just bring everything back up again. This will, you know, open up wounds and they'll uh, expose them to the public and the kind of, you know, who wants to see any of those women cross-examined? in a defense of this man. So yeah. I think that that's a very big thing that the prosecution is thinking in considering a plea deal. But hey. also, let's not forget that with this, we talk about aggravated murder of a fetus, there's also a legal question well, involved. Well, yeah, hang on, hang on, because you guys got answers, but we got questions in juror number eight. You had a specific question about that very point. Yeah, I was going to say, what role are the unborn fetus's deaths playing into the pursuing of the murder charges, and will they be more likely to take a plea on that because of the ongoing legal debate of whether or not a fetus is alive? That's a fancy question. You got a fancy answer? I, I'm going to give you a fancy answer. Um, and, and what that is, is is as follows, is that, number one, the law defines feticide and, and how far along the, the, the fetus has to be developed before you can seek 
um, the death penalty or murder charge, and that's number one, because if you say that the, it, she was in her first trimester, you're not going to get the death penalty for that. So there's that. There's the proof issue about how far along it was. So there are a number of issues, but the jury is correct that when it comes down to determining um, what to do, you got to look at the age of the fetus and, and the applicable law there. And no one was going to see a doctor, so you don't have that sort of documentation in this case. But it has been the law in Ohio since 1996 for aggravated murder, the unlawful termination of a pregnancy. We got time for some more, because sure. on that point, Juror number six had a question. Oh, I love running down here to talk to my jurors. Let them have it. Along those same lines, regarding the birth of the baby who's now six, was there any degree of medical care? There had to be something. You look at women who go into a hospital normally, you know, they're kept under watch, they're given medication, there's sonograms. You know, something had to occur because the child is six. No, nothing. Yeah, and what about the health? No, what no. Do we know anything about no, that? The, that child received no care. In fact, the mother, uh, one of the victims was told that when she delivered that child, if that child did not come out fine, that she would be killed. So she took extra care. I don't know what information or what knowledge she knew to do, but that child, unbelievably, is very healthy. Mm -hmm. And when they first found them and took them to the hospital, of course, they evaluated her, made sure everything was okay, and they found her to be, you know, unbelievably doing fine. Miraculous. And miraculous. miraculous. That's Absolutely. The word I, that's the word I was looking and for. And the mother, too, which is amazing because yes. of the complications. Yes. All right, we've got a verdict.